Emma James on the other side of our studio. Brexit's been the big talking point, hasn't it, online all day, and not just because of last night's um, debate. No, absolutely. It was the last minute dash for people to register for the opportunity to vote in the referendum, which takes place later this month, that really caught people by surprise, including the government and the website, which uh, crashed because of the weight of traffic. Uh, Quartz reports that more than half a million people in the UK registered to vote yesterday. That's on the day of the deadline, so very much people leaving it to the last minute. Uh, what this article talks about is the fact that perhaps it's the nature of this very tight race that's inspired all these late registrations because the latest YouGov poll puts uh, the Remain camp on 43%, while the votes to leave Europe are put at 42%, so just 1% difference. Uh, so really people starting to think that perhaps every vote is going to count. Um, looking elsewhere, there's been quite a lot of research done on the use of social media with relation to Brexit. Uh, and it's interesting to note that vote leave has really dominated here. Twice as many tweets with the hashtag vote leave as vote remain. Uh, 800,000 versus 400,000. Now these figures come from Brandwatch. They've been monitoring the social media activity for the last two months. Other figures they've come up with worthy of note, 5.4 million mentions, 4 million of those in the last month alone. So this really is gathering pace as that vote draws nearer. Um, they say that the top issues people are talking about are economy and immigration. As for last night's debate itself, who came out on top? Well, it does depend on where you look, obviously. Um, the Express, no surprise that they have come out thinking that the Leave campaign spokesperson Nigel Farage was more convincing. The paper is firmly allied with the UK Independence Party, Farage's party, which is very much... In favour I was of going to leaving. say the Express is as, probably as right as you can get on. Exactly. The... They claim to have polls that back up what they're saying, saying that Cameron didn't manage to sway anyone's opinion, but that there were a few people who were sitting on the fence at the start of the debate who were then talked into believing that maybe the UK should leave the EU. Uh, taking a look at The Guardian, though, a left-leaning newspaper, they've spoken to various uh, opinion writers and uh, commentators, and uh, Gary Young says that it was like a battle between the Joker and the Superman villain Lex Luthor. They're both so deeply flawed and thoroughly unpleasant that you don't care who wins. Um, he goes on to say that they both looked like losers, and the biggest compliment that he paid to anyone was for David Cameron, saying that he he was less annoying. Let's move on. The teams have arrived, football teams here in France for Euro 2016. Uh, security concerns, of course, are extremely high given the state of emergency. But uh, there is a smartphone um, app that may make people feel a little safer. That's the idea behind this. The French government has unveiled an app just two days before Euro 2016 kicks off. Um, security and ensuring that people actually feel safe are really top priorities right now and obviously it is a major challenge um, but the government wants to ensure that people do still go to the fan zones that they do still get the two million expected uh, visitors as a result of Euro 2016. Um, and so they've come up with this app, which is called SAIP, not a very catchy name. Basically, it means Public Alert and Information System. Um, it is available to download free from today. And rather, the idea is that rather than people going to the rumour mill of Twitter to find out information about something that may be happening, um, this will give them accurate, confirmed information in the event of the worst case scenario. Um, it was developed in the wake of November 13th, those terror attacks in Paris, uh, and you can sign up to be kept informed about eight different areas, including, uh, sorry, as well as where you are, because geolocators will tell, tell the app where you are, and if anything happens in your area, you will receive a, an alert, just a visual one, Nothing with sound, because they don't want to draw any attention to people in the event of there being an emergency. OK, it's coming from the right direction, regardless of how it may or may not feel. Um, finally, World Oceans Day. Yes, absolutely. You might like to call it a chance to marvel at nature's glory or a chance to wonder at uh, man's stupidity, really. Um, but what has come out are some amazing, striking images, uh, including a video that's been shared very, very widely. We can take a look at those images now. It shows bride's whales feeding off of the coast of New Zealand. A 12-ton, 12-metre-long whale and later a calf uh, feeding on plankton just below the surface. Uh, those aren't 
not the pictures that you're seeing at the moment. Hopefully we can Although that was impressive. Pictures. This is it, isn't it? Uh, yes, indeed, this is it. Um, the images captured by researchers at the Auckland University of Technology, they created a special drone um, tailor-made for this job of flying over the seas to capture wildlife. They didn't expect this, though. They were hoping to get humpback humpback whales and dolphins. Um, and the reason that this is so fortunate and so rare is there are less than 200 brides whales left in New Zealand's waters. Now this has now been viewed by thousands of people, something that not many people could have expected to be able to see. However, on the downside of World Oceans Day is uh, this particular fact um, that this Twitter user is pointing out. We currently expect a total a plastic mass to outweigh total fish mass in the water before 20. 50. Plastic is a huge issue. It's kind of the theme of this year's World Oceans Day. Um, this Twitter user, Wake Up Call, this is a critical time for the marine environment. Uh, and one of the problems with plastic, as well as the fact that it's washing up in huge amounts, 20,000 pieces of uh, plastic found on the beaches of Hawaii, but it's also proving to be very popular among the fish themselves. Those little micro beads you get in body washes and face scrubs and sometimes toothpastes. To fish, it becomes like junk food and they prefer it to their real food. So that is the real problem that is facing the oceans at this moment in time. Emma James, food for thought there. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Emma James of Media Watch. Marcus